trip started with the idea of backpacking. The dream just kind of grew. Somehow motorbikes got thrown in the mix. It's January 2014 and it's now 40 days till we fly out on our big adventure. Of course, the only obstacle was that we had a dog. She was adorable, we loved her to bits, and I couldn't bear the thought of leaving her. So I said to Stu, if you want to do this trip and you want to go away for a long time, then she has to come, and I'm happy to do it on bikes, but we need to figure out a way to do that. And Stu being Stu, he went looking for a solution. Here's Skylar. Skylar, sit. 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 Very, very cute little puppy. This is us. This is <laughs> this is the pack track. Skylar really enjoyed riding. Anytime we got out her harness, she was just ecstatic. She was um she was so excited. And she'd jump up on the bike and into her carrier. I mean it was it, it was as simple as that. She it was very easy to know that she she loved riding. I don't think it really dawned on me what we were doing until I got on the plane flying out of Sydney to Dallas. You know, you're thinking about everything other than what you're actually going to be doing when you start this adventure. So we got on the flight, it sort of really hit me. I knew we were going to have a lot of challenges, that it wasn't going to be easy. But uh, the one thing I was definitely confident about was that we were going to enjoy it, that it was going to be a really rewarding trip. What's going on, Skylar? What are you going to do with all this gear? How are we going to get on the bike, Sniffer? Hey Sniffer, hello, you enjoying being in Dallas? Hey. Shit, that's deep. Hey, oh. peek to the left. Oh, this is amazing, I can't believe we're doing this. I still can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, I never, I never thought I'd do something like this. Wow, your eyes need to adjust to here. Well, it's one of those trust struggles going through here. We really wanted to see some of the ruins. Couldn't get Skylar into any of the ones in Mexico, which was a real shame. But when we entered Belize, there was a site, we, we always ask, and they let us take Skylar in. It has to be one of the highlights of the trip, taking her in and walking around and up and over the, the pyramids. This is the top. view. Really nice cool breeze. Look at that. That's where we came from. Down there. After Mexico we traveled through Central America. We hit every country. Um, we spent at least a night but it was very quick. When we got to Panama we had to get to Colombia. We knew that there was no way by road from Panama into Colombia so we had to Cross the Daring Gap somehow. We thought that taking the sailboat could be fun um, and we met other travellers who had done it and Stu read online all about it. So we very quickly found, uh, found a boat that was leaving, it's called Jacqueline. We're on the wharf, a wharf in the middle of nowhere in Panama. There's our boat 
that's the boat that's going to take us to Columbia. Yeah. It's all a little dodgy. Um, we've had to get the bikes and our gear onto the wharf, unloaded. There's our stuff. She's just about to bring my bike up. Fingers crossed, there's my bike. And we basically strapped our bikes onto the deck next to the handrails and we hopped on board with Skylar and about 20 odd other backpackers. And we spent five days uh, just kind of cruising around the Sandblast Islands, uh, going swimming, going to going over to little islands and playing volleyball and just having a really nice time. All right, let it go. And Skylar loved to swim, so she was jumping off the boat every opportunity. We almost couldn't keep her back. does all the research and then I listen to what Stu says about where we should go and what it'll be like and sometimes he's right and sometimes he's very wrong. We went to Guyana and he was very wrong about what it was going to be like. So how are you feeling about the first stretch of road on gravel? Well, you don't know that it's gravel. I know but I thought that we'd, we'd do the filming saying it then if it wasn't gravel we'd just not worry about the video. If it was gravel, then we'd deal with it. We'd have a, some footage. So how do you feel about first stretch of road on gravel? Well, we don't actually know that it's gravel. <laughs> but if it is, uh, I think we've got the tires for it this time. Cut. And it was just mud. The road, Letham to Linden Road was, <laughs> for us then, horrendous. I mean, we really, we still hadn't done off-road riding by the time we got to Guyana. So we were kind of really thrown in the deep end. Took us a day or two to figure out that we should let the tyre pressure down to handle better in the mud because our tyres were running on 40 PSI. So air pressure was on 40, like we have it on the roads. So um, we've dropped it down to 20. I think we'll probably take it down to 16. Don't really know what we're doing, but we'll work it out. <laughs> we're kind of playing it by ear. So how do we go after we let the tyres down, Janelle? After we let the tyres down, awesome. <laughs> Before we let the tyres down, I thought we were going to die. All right, this is day two of the ride to Georgetown. How do you feel about today's ride, Janelle? Uh, I'm a little nervous today. Turns out there were no seal roads. Let's <laughs> turn and yeah, get it onto the back wheel. Okay, that's good. So. Going through this is going to be challenging. How are you feeling about this crossing, Stu? Loving it. Love going first. Got my chocolate boots. Yeah. It's not like we're going to get any dirtier, really. No. I don't Just think I'm going to get through it without falling over, but we'll see. We've just walked it and had a bit of a look, not all the way, it's pretty crappy, um, but we think we've got a route to go. She's going to go next. 
There's Isn't Snoopa. It? Snoopa doesn't mind. She's nice and clean. Yeah, <laughs> he made it. <laughs> I just dropped my bike. I slipped in that coming out. Almost made it and went careering over there. And you can see bits. You can see bits of my broken uh, blinker. Broke my blinker. I think it's my fourth fall today. First time I've broken something, and we're only about two k's from the town. We're gonna stay. <laughs> This, I don't have a cap on the end of this. <laughs> How was that? A bit scary. We were sliding around in the muds, getting covered in muds. But it was fun. I mean, we we did really enjoy it. Um, and Skylar didn't seem to mind. It was a bit hot, humid. But when we got to Georgetown, we really felt like we were adventure riders now. Just before we got to Venezuela, Skylar was starting to show signs of an illness that she would been diagnosed with before we left Australia. Our departure date was originally December 2013, but about two months before Skylar was diagnosed with lymphoma. So for the last few months, we've been fighting the cancer. She's due for bone marrow transplant in a couple of weeks. It's been a hard few months, especially for Skylar. She's undergone a lot of chemotherapy and she's been sick. She's a battler. She'll, uh, she's got through it, but we're going to take her and she'll be with us the whole time. And that's what, that's what she loves. When we got to Venezuela from Guyana, Skylar was, Skylar was really not well. She had gone into remission. When we left Australia, she was a very healthy, happy dog. But the cancer had returned while we were travelling through Mexico, Central America, and she was back on chemotherapy drugs. And we were just enjoying every moment we, we had with her and um, hoping that she would go on for longer than she did. So in Venice, eventually it was in Venezuela that she passed away and we left her come to visit Sniffer before we head off a few while before we'd be back to see her again. There's a grave. There's more rocks on top. It's a nice spot. It was devastating losing her. I was heartbroken, we both were, and really I just wanted to go home. But Stu convinced me that we should do a little bit of traveling around Venezuela, um, sort of 
a bit of a time out, I guess, you know, from instead of moving from country to country. Um, so we, we went on a hike up, up Mount Roraima and um, we just kind of mooched around Venezuela and just dealt with the loss of Skylar and, um, and uh, you know, we were started, we did, we started feeling a bit better, a bit happier, you know, it just takes time. Grand Sabana. Just amazing. We are going to Roraima! <laughs> Say this on five nights and we'll be back here on Friday. <laughs> We've arrived in Paratapui. Uh, we just travelled by car from, from San Francisco and it's the last point that we can take by road. From here we're hiking to Mount Roraima. Should take us two days and a day to climb it. Spend a day on top and then we'll come back in over two days. Here we go. Let's go. Ciao. Yesterday we left Paratapui and we hiked about 14 kilometers to this point. Did a couple of water crossings, which was fun. Uh, the cold water was really nice on our sore feet. Um, and from here we do about a eight kilometer hike to the base camp of Mount Roraima. Then the next day we trek to the top. Uh, we've had good weather so far. Looks like it's going to be a nice day today again. We're at the base camp of Mount Roraima. We got here just in time to set up our tent, have a quick swim in the freezing cold water after getting all sweaty hiking. Eight, uh, about eight kilometers today. And, um, and then it started to rain. So we hopped in our tent for a little bit. It rained last night. The tent got wet on the outside and a lot of our stuff got wet on the inside as well. We have to wait for it to dry before we pack up. Good morning, Stu. Good morning. How cold do you reckon it is? Uh, 15 degrees. 15 degrees. What time do you think no it idea. is? <laughs> About, I don't know, it's hard to tell here. Yeah, it's early. We need coffee. I thought he said there were no scary bits. This is almost vertical. <laughs> How's that? Easy. Sorted. <laughs> At least you got a smile on your face. <laughs> Finally reached the top. And my god, what a feeling. It's awesome up here. We made it to the top. Water's actually really cold, <laughs> but it feels so good on our sore muscles and our itchy bites and everything. It's like you're on another planet up here. It's amazing. We weren't ready to to take on another dog after Skylar. We thought maybe um, six months down the road we'd, we'd see how we go, but um, but not now. We were, we were thinking we'll, we'll continue the trip in memory of Skylar. The dog that actually gave Skylar a blood transfusion from, uh, we went and we saw her and the vet asked if we could adopt her. She'd been hit by a truck when she was only uh, a one-year-old uh, puppy. She'd come from the streets. As much as we really weren't ready for it, it was hard to say no. She's such a lovely dog. It was really difficult at first. Um, all of a sudden, instead of seeing Skylar's head popping out of the pilling pooch, I'm seeing this dog, Wheaty, that I don't know and um, is not my Skylar. So it was hard. But Alicia was the lady who gave Wheaty to us and she said that this is the best way to mend a broken heart and she was right. But it did take time. It did not take long for her to come out of her shell. Within a week, she was sitting up um, as far out as her chain would let her go and, um, and just loving having the wind in her face and being on the road and going to different places and 
having the attention of all the many strangers that would want to come up to her and um, pat her and she just loved it. This guy is massive. He's totally alive, Janelle. No, they can't move fast at all. <laughs> we got no idea. Holy shit! That is the biggest thing I've ever seen. So for our viewers at home, we're leaving this service station because it's not up to Janelope's standard. <laughs> so is this one up to your standard, Janelle? This is better. Better? We're in Porto Madryn in Argentina on our way south and uh, we're here for a couple of nights staying with a young couple we, we found through Horizons Unlimited. Um, we've got a problem with Stu's front tyre. He's had the rim repaired a couple of times but each time it gets repaired it's getting worse. Uh, we have to stop every hour to put air in the tyre so this couple's going to help us uh, sort out the problem today. This is the repair that's been done. It's either leaking still from within the stem or off the edge of the rim. So we've done it twice, we're not going to do it again. We're going to put an inner tube in. So we're going to drill a hole on the other side so that we don't weaken the rim any more than we need to. We'll pick a spot well in between the spokes and hopefully that should solve all our problems. Vamos a dar Is this going to work? Yes. Yeah, we have it. Uh, repaired rim. And no three hundred dollar shipping fee to Argentina. Today. We've got two border crossings. We have to leave Argentina, go into Chile, then go back to Argentina. And we have gravel road. Yay! And we have um, and we have a ferry. Yeah. Awesome. Looking forward to it? Um, yeah, sort of. Looking forward to getting to Ushuaia. How have the roads been? Roads have been great. What's um, the weather been like? Uh, slowly getting a little bit cooler, but not really cold, but it's summer, so um, I guess that's to be expected. But uh, the wind, wind hasn't been too bad. A few little spots with gusts. Yeah, fine. Yeah, right the border. 
by the city of the city, right the corner. So how do you feel about today's ride, Janelle? We got 30 knot winds today. We got 120 kilometers at least of gravel road. We have the option of staying here and waiting till tomorrow when the winds are going to be 18. And, but no, we decided to go so that we can. We decided to go. Janelle, if you made the decision, we're going. What do you think, Janelle? Very pretty, very pretty. I'm really surprised after all these flat, flat, flat through Argentina and uh, get to the bottom and it's a little bit like New Zealand. <laughs> Made it to Ushuaia. Janelle, wave. How excited are you? <laughs> this is awesome. There she is, the cheetah in Ushuaia. It was as difficult as I was expecting, um, but I my riding abilities had improved a lot over the last sort of six to eight months, um, particularly on gravel roads. I was start, really starting to get the hang of the gravel roads. The wind was always going to be an issue. I'm sort of on my tippy toes. That was a milestone for us, really good experience just getting there a challenging ride but a lot of fun if you want to follow us you can go to our website which is thepacktrack.com from there there's links to our facebook youtube and twitter followings uh, which are just facebook.com slash thepacktrack youtube.com slash thepacktrack and twitter.com slash thepacktrack